Hello my small fat adapted family and welcome back to the Great Keto Bake Off. For anyone that is new to this series, this is how it goes. I watch the Great British Bake Off live at 8pm. I then pick one recipe from the entire episode. I go away and I stay up late writing a keto version of it. When I get up, I get ingredients and here I am. I am trusting my ability to replicate high carb food in a very short space of time. Now that does mean that there is a possibility that it will go wrong like it does on the show, but if it does, you get to see that all on camera. So episode three of the Great British Bake Off was the dreaded bread week. The signature was focaccia. The technical was cheese and olive ciabatta breadsticks with a tzatziki dip and the showstopper was 3D milk bread displays. This week, I was not prepared to be messing around with 3D food structures again, and ciabatta is a texture that I don't even know if we can replicate on the keto diet. So, for week three, bread week of the Great British Bake Off, I will be ketofying focaccia. This focaccia is a little bit rogue because it is not any specific baker's flavor and it's kind of incorporating a lot of different aspects from the bakers this week. And the reason that I've decided to do it this way is because I really wanted to give this focaccia a bit of an Elliot flair. And that basically just means I'm doing a more intense version of what Rashika did. So this will be a coconut flour based focaccia that is then topped with olive oil and vegetables are used to create what looks like a flour painting. I did dabble with the idea of making a keto focaccia that used vital wheat gluten and yeast and a yeast activator so that I could get that elasticity that high carb focaccia has. But I'm aware that a lot of my viewers have a gluten intolerance and I wanted to make something that more people could enjoy. So that's why this is coconut flour based because coconut flour will make the recipe a lot fluffier than almond flour would. That and we don't have to spend hours faffing around and double proofing this bread. It can be made and baked within 30 minutes. For this focaccia, the ingredients you will need are eight eggs, four tablespoons of Greek yogurt, 114 grams of coconut flour, five tablespoons of ground psyllium husk, one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, four tablespoons of olive oil, then I have a collection of vegetables to make my decoration, such as cherry tomatoes, parsley, uh, rosemary, yellow pepper, orange pepper. I drew a really rough sketch of what I wanted my art to look like. But of course, when I've actually got the focaccia in front of me ready to be decorated, it may be that I use slightly different ingredients or less ingredients or change my patterning a little bit. So we'll sort of see what we actually use when we get to that point. Let's actually cook this really simple, very fibrous and filling focaccia. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the oven on 190 Celsius, which is 375 Fahrenheit. Then you want to line a large baking pan with parchment paper, which as always I have behind me. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our eggs. We're going to take our Greek yogurt. So we're just gonna add them together and beat them until they are well combined. Once you are happy that that is whisked enough, we add all of the actual bread ingredients. So we add the coconut flour, the psyllium husk, the salt, and the baking powder. And again, this just gets mixed until it's all well combined. When you're done mixing, you're left with this sort of real fluffy but dense mixture. It reminds me of a uh, uh, powdered mashed potatoes, it's got that same sort of consistency. Usually I would say because there's coconut flour and there's psyllium husk, you need to just leave it in this bowl for five minutes while you prepare other things. But because we're going to be decorating it and that's going to take longer than five minutes, from here we're going to put it straight into our prepared baking sheet. And the trick here is that we want to create a rectangle that is quite even but is about an inch thick. We want it to be quite thick. I could use a rolling pin, but I think it's easier to just use my hands. I really want those edges specifically to be nice and even, so it's easier to put the vegetables on it. I really like using my hands anyway, because I always find that it gives it a rustic feel. I, I don't know why, I just prefer that when making homemade stuff. 
you know, if I wanted something to be really precise when it comes to making bread, I'd go, well, no, I wouldn't go and buy it from the store because that wouldn't be keto. Okay, I think that's pretty even. What I'm going to do is just put some dimples in it. I don't need to do this. I'm choosing to do this just to make it feel a little bit more like high carb focaccia. So the next step is to take your olive oil and I'm obviously feeling very handsy today because I'm not even going to brush it on. I'm just going to pour some on and then rub it in. And this really will give it a lot of its taste. I've said four tablespoons, but I think you only actually need three because I don't want to absolutely coat it in olive oil. I just want to give it a nice topping of it. Beautiful. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start with my black sesame seeds because these are kind of the dirt at the bottom that I've decided to go with. I'm just going to gently press those in. I think the important initial bit is getting those spring onion bits laid down. So I'll chop the end off, get off any bits of dirt that I don't really want. I wondered if I can actually cut them into quarters, make them really thin like that. Yeah, I think I think that works. Okay, I've got one laid here. I just need to press it in enough that it kind of sticks. I've got another one kind of coming up at the same time. So we're going to have one that comes up like that. So that's actually... Oh no, that, that is that one. I'm struggling to follow my own photo here. Okay, I've, I've found that putting them sideways, they want to stick. Putting them flat, they don't want to stick. I should not have started with the sesame because there is sesame everywhere. Okay, those are my stems done. <laughs> Let's get the rosemary done next. So the rosemary I wanted to kind of act a little bit like a sort of wild bush, I guess. So then I'm going to use fresh parsley leaves to act like leaves on the plant. Can you see kind of why I didn't flavour this now? Because it's got rosemary, it's got onion, it's got parsley. There's a lot of different flavours going on in this. So now I need to start actually constructing my flowers. For the middle of the flower, I have decided to use black pitted olives. I think maybe just the one circle might do the trick rather than multiple. You know you're an adult when you like olives. Name a single kid that likes olives. I'm going to be using pepper. So I'm cutting the pepper into tiny little strips that can be like my flower petals. I can see a lot of that olive oil that I put in is soaking in due to the high levels of psyllium and coconut flour that just, they both just sap up liquid and they are sapping up a lot right now. So then we'll do an orange flower. Mm. Mm -hmm. Right, so then for the final flower, the final big flower, main flower, I'm just going to slice up some tomatoes and then I'm just going to give them a bit of a push. That gives us three flowers. We're getting somewhere now. Mm. I've changed one of the stems ever so slightly because I'd like to just have a little bit of pepper dew. Maybe if I did like a... <gasps> oh, I could do like a little tiny rose maybe. What I'm about to do is not difficult in the sense of being a really intricate thing to do. It is difficult because I haven't really thought about how I'm going to do it. And that is that I want to make two little bees. So I thought if I get an olive and I cut it in like, cut that real thin, I can like layer it. I get a little bee. <laughs> Here's what it looks like uh, before going in the oven because of course it may completely change and look horrendous when it comes out. So this will go in the oven for about 15 to 18 minutes. I'll probably check it around 12. And I'm looking for that top to be nice and golden. And I'm also expecting a couple of my decorations to start heavily browning as well. Let's see what happens. In the end, it took 22 minutes to cook, but look at that. No proofing, no double proofing, no hassle of having to knead dough. We got that in and out pretty quickly. The bit that took the longest was the decoration, which has held, which is fantastic. I will tell you what though, the kitchen absolutely stinks of rosemary and rosemary is a lovely smell, but not in this quantity. Just three little sprigs is enough for this kitchen to almost give me a headache with how much it smells like rosemary. I'm not going to be trying that rosemary corner. I'll probably cut a little section maybe where uh, my top B is. Just because I'm not too worried about the actual taste of the stuff on top. That was really for fun. The taste I care about is the focaccia, how it feels, how it tastes, is it coconutty, you know, that kind of thing. So we'll just, I'm going to cut quite a big slice so I can try a couple of bits of it just through the top flour. And then we'll get that B in it as well, like that. So first impression is it is quite fluffy. It is a little bit dense, that sort of typical psyllium denseness. 
Right, let's cut a piece with just sesame seeds on it. When you bite into it, it's lovely and fluffy with a nice golden crust. It's actually, it's not wet, it's not dense, it has a lot of fluff to it, which was what I was hoping for using coconut flour. And in terms of taste, with nothing on it, it doesn't really have a taste, the bread itself. You can kind of taste a little bit of husk, you can't taste any coconut flour, but what you can taste is this, not overpowering, but not subtle olive oil. You can, yeah, you can definitely taste the olive oil. Oh, that is nice with pepper, because you get the sweetness from the pepper and the olive oil. Mm, it's gorgeous. It feels like it's quite hard to work at, but I think that's just because you're working with two very fibrous ingredients. It's not eggy, it's not psyllium-y, and it looks pretty. We've got another success. Now, in terms of macronutrients, uh, this is without the toppings. It will cut into 12 and each slice is 151 calories, 11 grams of fat, six grams of protein, and 1.3 grams of net carbs. But as I have said many times, it is very fibrous. So this is the kind of thing you don't wanna have a lot at once, otherwise you will feel quite bloated and full. The reason I haven't included the decoration to the macronutrients is because different slices will have different sort of bits of flavor and ingredients in them so it's not an easy number to work out should you want to make your own focaccia masterpiece you're going to need to work the uh, topping macros out yourself thank you so much for joining me again on this incredibly chaotic series join me again next week for dessert week but with that being said that is all for this video leave a like if you found it interesting insightful or helpful subscribe for more keto content any questions any comments any queries anything down below keep calm keto on Thanks for watching.